from the hollers and hills of West Virginia, it's Heavenly Hills Homestead with another episode. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Boom. guys so what are we gonna do today we're gonna go down here and we're gonna take some pumpkin seeds out of one of the pumpkins that we got kind of look around the yard at all the dead and dying things the frost is killing off uh we're gonna talk about some frost protection and uh and, and some other things today so stay tuned for eh, a pretty decent video i think let's do it first off <laughs> look at these strawberries frosting like crazy here everything's dying strawberries are alive look here strawberries everywhere on this plant and this plant and those plants next year those plants are going to be really really good i'm gonna have a flower bed right here of sorts and uh we're going to use it a lot for uh, for a lot of strawberries and uh so we got these strawberries we got strawberries up there in the other bed um that we'll be moving next summer into around the the trees up there Tons of strawberries in this greenhouse right here. We gotta clean all this mess up soon. And uh, we got all these strawberries. I didn't get to it yet, but this is a winter project. We are going to get this situated and, and fixed up for next spring. It produced a lot of strawberries this year. And uh, next spring, we hope that it will produce even more. There was This started with eight plants, is all this was, was eight plants. So it did really good. And then we got um, strawberries back here. Look at my poor pitiful fig tree. Ain't that just sad? Any of them good, I wonder? Any of them are good now. They're soft. They're getting soft. I wonder if they're good, day. I'd say not because of the frost. I've been wanting to try a fig. Hold on a minute, y'all. Let's see what we got. Let me hold it a tripod. Hmm. Well. You not? Ah, oh, man. Oh, no. no good. No good. Oh, that well. Sucks. Just how it happens. Um. Might try some of the other ones. Here's all these strawberries on this side that we have got. Tons of strawberries. Gotta get over here and weed all this out and stuff. Um, and then we gotta cover it with, uh, with um, straw and everything. Uh, our, um, whatever this is, I can't think of the name right offhand. Rhubarb. Rhubarb's doing pretty good. Gotta get over here and cover it up as well. So lots of, lots of work to do for that too. Um, yeah, we got, there's tons of rhubarb plants in here now. There's like five or six rhubarb plants, I think. And and, uh, and there's a goji berry tree, which is right, this right here, I believe, is the goji berry tree. So, and then, uh, so we got a lot of, a lot of cleaning. You can see all these strawberries plumb up in here. We're going to get all that squared away as well pretty soon. But, um. Lots and lots of work to do. It's just been so daggone cold. It's not been uh, warm enough. It's not been good good weather to do anything. In. I mean, today it's uh, it's you know 70 degrees. It feels wonderful out here. Uh, but you know, the past week that we've been home, it's been miserable outside, and I don't like working in misery. Uh, kind of looking here, you see we have one goji berry tree right here. It's doing good. 
Uh, da -da 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 I know we got more in here. Um, They're all down this way. There's one down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I'm trying to look for all of them. Here's one right here. We have to uncover that. There it is, right there. It's 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 doing well. Okay. Next year these will be even bigger, so they won't get hurt by any of that stuff. We just have to be careful. There's another one right here. You see it right there. So we'll, we'll get that. And like I said, we're going to clean up all this. Here's another one right here. That's a pretty decent size one as well. So, and then this one right here is the last one right here. So we'll, we'll, we'll get that. There's one, two, three, four. If we look closely, we'll there's find. Five right here's five. Yep. yep. Right there's five. five. Oh, yeah, he's got a good, good screen right there. You can see the steps on the There it is. Right there's the fifth one. How big do these There's things another go? one here somewhere. And this mask is. It was over here somewhere, wasn't it? It's somewhere close, right in here somewhere, very close. And well, we'll find it whenever we go to clean up. So, anyhow. <clears throat> We're going to open up this pumpkin here. This is the uh, this is the 543 Cook now, which was the um, the tile, the uh, 2195 tile plant. So we're going to open it up and see what it looks like that inside. Is. So um, I'm kind of wanting to half it down the middle. So that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to half it down so. the middle. That ain't going through there. What? That, no, that's that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's thick. So we're going to try to go through this. Um, and uh, we'll get you set up so we can cut through it. Okay, guys, we're gonna use this saw right here and we're gonna cut through this thing. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Count of five. One, two, you're gonna be going three, four, five, go. Pull it, buddy. <clears throat> Thing's heavy. Oh, it's going through my side like butter. Okay, hold it right there. <laughs> this is fun. Why don't we do this with all our We're going to. Okay, guys, so there it is. We got it cut all open. Now we're going to get the seeds out of it, uh, measure it. Let's measure it real quick. Um, so you can see here, we put it right there. We've got seven inches there. We got nine inches there, got eight inches there, got seven inches there. Uh, depends on where you go, seven to eight inches here. You got roughly eight inches there, <clears throat> eight inches there, eight, nine inches there, seven inches there, seven, eight inches there. So this pumpkin, all, all in all, was a very, very, very evenly grown pumpkin. And so, depending upon how the rest of these look, once we start opening them up uh, throughout the next month, we'll be opening all of them up. Uh, we'll start looking at them. Now, my one that was at the, uh, the North Carolina State Fair, it's already been opened up. And I was like one foot thick on one side, about seven, eight inches thick on the other, I believe is what Brandon told me. So... A little offset there. I don't know why it was like that. Maybe, maybe due to the fact of where it was growing on the hill, like it was. Although I leveled that area out as best as possible, maybe that had something to do with it. I'm not sure. I think the uphill side was actually the thicker side, so that would not make a whole lot of sense. I, you know, you would think the thicker side would be the downhill side. <clears throat> Anyhow, we got this opened up. I mean, she she's very very thick, guys. I mean, there's there's just you know there's no way around it. She was a good thick pumpkin, healthy pumpkin. Her seeds though, they're not looking so good. A lot of white tips in here. We do have a few good ones like this one right here. Uh, just pulled it out, and uh, it looks all right. But I, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. It's kind of soft and mushy, so I don't know if there's any any seed in it or not. Let you look at it there. But there is a lot of white tips in there. And what is a white tip? So let me go ahead and show you. These, the kids throw a bunch of them in there. A bunch of these ain't good. This would be considered a white tip right there. All right. Uh, but these here, there's nothing in these. That's There's nothing in that. 
So the kids just threw them in there. There's nothing in that one. You know, all white. A white tip literally has a white tip. See how that's white tip there? So there may or may not produce anything. So I don't know. Um, so far, this is the only one I've opened up with the Clonex. So uh, we'll see. This was, I only used Clonex on two plants this year. Uh, well, two pumpkins, that is. And uh, so we'll see uh, what what's transpired here. Um, some of them's white tips. Some of them's brown looking. It's a weird, weird batch of seeds. But we're going to... We'll get them all out of here and uh, see what we got and get them dried up and stuff. So let me get this all done and then I'll bring you back when we have them all picked out. Missed it, dog it. That thing flew right over our heads just now. Whoa, get over there. I hate this camera. Okay guys, so we got all these seeds. That's all we got out of it. I'd say it's a, to me, it's a low seed count right there. I don't think there's very many in there. And they're all white tips, every one of them. So that's also discouraging. Um, you can see there are tons of white ones. Let me show you here. Look at all this white, all these white seeds there. All that white right there. I mean, just everywhere, all this stuff is nothing but white seeds. You can see them, just tons and tons and tons of white seeds. And you can just, everywhere you look, they're, those are no good. So, and there's probably, I don't know, 500 or more of those white ones. Just no good. So, anyhow, we got it all cleaned out. Now, I want to show you though, this pumpkin is a great pumpkin and I will grow this one again. Rather, it's this cross, and this cross is the 2195 tile to the 18, or excuse me, to the 1965 Rotobaw. So next year, this this cross should be very, very, very good. I'm I'm thinking, um, but I also have one more 2195 tile left, so I may uh, grow it next year. I don't I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. But you can see this pumpkin is evenly spaced all the way around, the same thickness all the way around, anywhere between. Um, seven to nine inches thick all the way around this pumpkin even small cavity look how tight and small that cavity is very tight small cavity very very nice I like the way this pumpkin grew you can see right there that bulge that is the stem bulge and here's a stem right here we're gonna cut this in half here in just a minute so you guys can see that cut and see how it looks from the side there I want to get a side uh, angle there and see how thick it was that way um, so anyhow, we're going to do that here in just a minute, but I wanted to, I just wanted to, you know, let you guys see, you know, this is, this is what it's about. It's about, you know, it's not just about growing the pumpkin. It's not just about, um, harvesting the seeds from the pumpkins. It's about everything that you can learn from the pumpkin itself, whether it's the plant or the pumpkin, you know, the actual fruit, you know, what can you learn from this? What can we glean from this? Okay. And I'm thinking, okay, we got all these white tips. We got all these white seeds. I have never harvested pumpkin seeds where I've had tons and tons and tons of, uh, of, of white tips. Never. I've never, I mean, all of them seed, there's not one legitimate hard seed in there that is not a white tip. 
Every one of them's got a white tip in there. All right, and then all these white ones here. This pumpkin plant had tons and tons and tons of, of, of time to grow um, and should have been well on its way, you know, by the time I cut it off. And, um, and, and the seeds should have been, like I said, well on their way to be, you know, to, uh, 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 past maturity and uh, it should have been fine. There should be no white tips in here. So the only thing that I can think of, you know, some I know somebody's gonna ask me the question, well, what do you think caused that? I, I mean, we'll look and we'll see what the 1883 seeds look like um, because I was told that they will be getting harvested, you know, after uh, Halloween night uh, down in Dollywood. So we'll wait and we'll see what they end up looking like. But I'm just gonna be honest with you. I truly believe that uh, that Clonex played a humongous part in these seeds not uh, not being correct like they should be, not uh, not not being you know solid seeds and they all be in white tips. And uh, we will we will uh, dry these out. We'll clean them up. We'll dry them out, and uh, and we'll see if they if they produce anything. We're going to do a germination test. You know about five seeds because they're so low of a count. I can't. I, I want to do ten. I want to do five seeds. We'll see what germinates out of the five and uh, and everything before we sell them but uh, definitely something to think of um, this plant was the biggest plant by far it was over a thousand square foot on this plant it produced this pumpkin right here that was uh, 543 pounds produced a 275 pound pumpkin up in the front yard another one that was 150 pounds and then another you know five or six that were 50 to 70 pounds so this pumpkin had a lot of a lot of pumpkins on the plant a thousand square foot it should have you know, but the Clonex is what really hurt me. Clonex got me, and, uh, and it was my recommendation to every grower. You can do what you want to, but my recommendation is do not ever use that stuff. It is bad stuff. Uh, even the Pattons will tell you that they had issues with it. Ian uh, Patton and them will tell you that they've had issues with it. You can email them and write them and ask them what they think about Clonex, and you'll, you'll get an email back stating that they've used it, and uh, it, it, it negatively impacted their, their growth. So uh, I would not use that stuff at all. Uh, while we're talking about uh, hormones and stuff, I want to go on ahead and tell y'all, uh, we're getting ready to do a two-year experiment. It, I would do it quicker and faster if I could, but the, the, it won't allow me here. Weather, weather and where I live just won't permit me to be able to grow uh, fast enough. So next year, what I plan to do is I plan to grow a pumpkin using Florel um, uh, hormone. Okay, Florel hormone, you can look it up and, uh, and everything. Uh, there's another one called Antithes, or, um, uh, made by Matt Nabacco. Uh, it's a, maybe a higher grade of Florel, but anyhow, we're not getting into all that. I'm going to use Florel that you can go buy from the store. You take Florel, you mix it up, and while that baby, while that pumpkin is a baby, you paint it on the pumpkin, okay? And you can see the directions and everything else, and you can Google and, and talk to other people, and you can find out all you want to about it. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to grow a pumpkin using Florel next year. And I'm going to grow that pumpkin, and I'm probably going to put the biggest pumpkin of my life on that on a scale next year using Florel. Either that, or I'm going to I'm going to grow the biggest pumpkin of my life, and whether it makes a scale or not, that's to be seen. But it'll probably be the biggest pumpkin that comes out of this patch next year using Florel. And you say, well, Ryan, if you know that's what it is, then why don't you use it on all of them? Because I'm getting ready to show you and prove to you something that's going to take two years to to prove and show. You use Florel, your seed counts are negatively impacted. Some people don't even get seeds out of the pumpkin. Now, why would you grow a pumpkin to not, not be able to grow it the following year? Look at every giant grower that, that is using Florel. Do they grow their own seeds? No, in fact, they do not. Any pumpkin grower that uses Florel do not grow their own seeds. I think something's fishy. When a, when a giant grower won't grow his own seeds, there's something wrong, okay? Um, now, granted, maybe he just was looking for a bigger pumpkin and it didn't perform, so he went on to the next. I get that, I understand that. But when you're growing a two, you know, 2,000 plus pound pumpkin and you're not growing your own seed, something is wrong. When you would, you know, not grow your 2,000 pounder and you'd go find a 15 to 1,800 pound seed to grow, okay? Something's wrong with that. And, um, and so I'm going to grow uh, uh, using Florel next year. And I'm going to see all the impacts that it has on my seeds. I'm gonna see all the impact that it has on seed, you know, on, uh, on the following year. I believe that people who, you know, who do do that and they end up selling their seeds and stuff, um, you know, to other growers, the growers buy these seeds with the expectation that this is going to be a, uh, a, 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 you know, an extremely good seed line and we're going to have this ginormous, you know, fruit off of it. And that is never the case. Not ever has any, has any pumpkin to my knowledge or to other growers' knowledge that I have talked to 
There has never been a pumpkin that has been grown with using Florel that has produced like it, like the mother, okay? Uh, there's just not been. And, and so we can, we're just going to do the experiment. I want to show this. I want to see whether it does or doesn't. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe there's no evidence to support it. But the theory is there. It's in, among more than just myself. There's tons of growers that feel this way and think this way. And so I think it worth the effort and the the scientific evidence for the giant growing community on whether or not Florel does anything special for you or not. I'm going to be growing with Florel in the house this winter for my giant tomatoes uh, because there was a huge study done on giant tomatoes first with Florel and, and that is where a lot of the information came from for the giant pumpkin growers. And so we're going to use everything that we can find. If you've got any information, please feel free to email me, babydrill2119 at yahoo.com. And uh, I would be more than willing to listen to any, any information you got, whether it, whether it supports or, you know, does not support Florel, okay? Um, but for me, for right now, I am going to show what I believe firmly that we are doing a disservice to the giant growing community for generations to come. Here's the, here's the reason why. If we use this stuff and we continue to have low seed count, no seed count, okay? And then our, our seeds are negatively impacted from those uh, seeds that are grown using Florel. And, and, um, and we end up, you know, with seeds that are genetically impacted for their protection. So anyways, uh, I feel that we're negatively impacting those uh, fruits. And what will end up happening is instead of our pumpkins, be, you know, having the potential to, to go heavier and, and heavier, we're going to go and we're going to start receding in, in those, unless we're using Florel. And eventually we're going to come to the end of the line where 4L won't even help, okay? And so here's what here's why I, the way I believe it. I believe that gi giant pumpkins right now have the potential. Cure Grace, go inside right now. Put the truck down. I believe the giant pumpkins have the potential to grow, you know, 1,900 to 2,100 pounds on their own right now using the regular fertilizer. I believe anything over 2,100 pounds, it takes Florel to get there. I believe 20, you know, maybe, you know, 22 to, to 26, 2,900, you had to use Florel to get that big, okay? I don't believe we're genetically there yet. I believe we're setting at, you know, 19 to 2,100 pounds, maybe 22, okay? Anything, you know, 2,200 and over, you're probably using Florel, all right? And if we continue to use Florel, we're gonna see our reductions in, in the genetics and we're going to continue to, to recede and, and until Florel does not make a difference, whether you use it or you don't, and it's not gonna help our pumpkins. So that's what I believe. That's, that's what I'm going to try to hopefully uh, prove or disprove uh, will happen using Florel. And we're going to do that. We're gonna start it in 2023. That's gonna be a huge, uh, a huge, uh, um, you can call it scientific, whatever you, you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, we're going to, we're going to do it. We're going to have this debate. We're going to have the, you know, the science, whatever you want to call it behind it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do it. We're going to look at it and see, does it matter or, or, or does it not matter? As I think we need to know. So anyhow, we're going to get this mess cleaned up and uh, on to the All right, guys, here we go. Yep. Line me up with the, with the center of the, center of the stem. Center of the stem? Uh, just about. Right there. That's the Are you ready? Yep. You ready? Go. You, you gotta, you're curving it. Bend, bend oh, am I curving it? Right, oh. Now you're still curving it. Right, there you go. Ready? Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's Whoa. Whoa. I am pulling. Good grief. Push. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Inches. I bet right now that is 20 inches. Right here is maybe 20 
side right here. What do you bet? This is 20 inches. Um, almost 10 there. This is going to be 20. And that what? is one foot. We have one foot right there to the cavity. This has got to be more than one a foot. One foot right there. Show you right here. This one foot too? Yeah, it's 11 inches. Oh, it is a foot. One foot. One foot. Darn. One foot back, on, one foot wide on that stem then. Do it to it, buddy. Careful. I am. Good job. Chop that other little piece up. No, 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 not the this big one. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. I was just going to set my axe down. Okay. There you go. Good job. All right. Let's clean them up. Okay, guys. So, uh, got all this done. We're going to start cleaning up the patch every day. Uh, I'm going to rake all this stuff up into the middle of the patch. I'm going to burn all that right there. Burn. I'm going to rake all the vines up and burn all the vines and put it into the, into the patch. Um, it's, I don't know, I just want to try it out and see if it helps or does anything. Um, I am going to get some biochar and start putting some biochar in here uh, this winter uh, and, and stuff. Uh, we're we're, we're kind of compacted over here a little bit more than what I wanted to be. We're pretty good down there on that end. Down here we start to get a little bit more compaction. don't really want to see any of that, so we're going to try to fix all that. I've got to get in here and pick up all this styrofoam and, and uh, all the blankets and all that stuff. I just ain't had really had, had no time. I've been... I've been working trying to get sponsors and and uh, and everything, trying to get my my uh, spreadsheet done up for the end of the year. We're going to talk about that. You know, how did we how did we grow compared to last year? You know, everything that we done and and did it pay off? Did it work out and everything? That's why we're I'm analyzing all these pumpkins and all the information that I get. So it's going to be a little while, but but no, you know, it's slowed down a little bit on videos right now. But guys, don't worry, the content's coming, and when it comes, it's just going to come in a great big wave, and we're just going to keep on going. Uh, we got uh, several things that we're planting uh, for indoor gardening, for growing in the greenhouse, uh, for the winter time. Uh, we're working on getting a greenhouse set up or a high tunnel rather set up here. Uh, hopefully by next year, uh, we're going to be having a high tunnel put in right in through here and we're going to grow in it next year, uh, hopefully, and, uh, and uh, get an earlier start and everything and be able to grow a little bit better. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on that. We're working really, really diligently on, on several different fronts. So you guys just got to give us a, a little bit of uh, time. We're going to get them videos cranked back out to you all. Uh, this right here, we're going to have to re, revamp this some. We're going to have to work on it some. I don't know exactly what to do, but we're going to have to figure it out and get it done. Um, I'm not taking it down. We're just going to have to figure out what works to keep it keep it up here like it is and then just go from there. So whatever we whatever we got to come up with and decide there, you know, is just what we're going to do with it. We're going to have to probably make something and push back on the poles and get them straightened back up and get them set back where they were. Probably use some bigger nails or some bigger uh, screws or something like that and get it, get it done better. And uh, use some heavier duty uh, zip ties. We'll, we'll buy some of those online uh, to get the exact size that ain't so stinking big like I had there. Um, right here though, I just wanted to show y'all. This is the 1965 Rotobah uh, stump here. And you can see how big it was. You know, it's a pretty, pretty decent stump. You can see this big main root right here on it there. It's a pretty nice main root right there. And, uh, and, uh, and, and it's done really well. You can see there it's still actually still drawing up. Watch your foot there, son. Oh, Let's see. Get this, uh, get that weed removed off of there. Yeah. Let me show y'all. Uh, easy, easy now. You can see that uh, big fragile. humongous main root. Yeah, watch out. There it's, uh, I don't, don't want to snap it there. It feels like it's getting ready to pop. Yeah, it did. It must have dove in the ground right there. But you can see there. Look here. Look how big that uh, that main root was right there on that on that stump right there. Look how big it is. That's that's over two foot long right there. It goes in right there. You can see it right right there. It is on the stump. Yeah. So right there, right there, it was getting fed there. Yeah. That's what you want to see. You want to see big stuff like that feeding your feeding your plants there. Another great big old root right there. I broke it off. Dove in the ground there. You can see. Um, see look here look here look here look that here. looks like a that looks like look at a that thing. root almost too look at that thing it's, that, that, it's, it's huge that right there is what you want to see y'all y'all want to see these great big old big old big old big old roots see how big that root is yeah, i broke it off Good anyhow 
There's a few more in there. We're gonna get them looked at there on TikTok. I'm gonna put a TikTok video up big this. Taking that big one right there out. Oh. So, anyhow, but that's what you want to see. You want to see them. Sorry about all that noise from the, from the guy there. But that's what you want to see. You want to see them great big old uh, roots. I mean, look at look at that. There's one huge root right there. There's another big old root. These are the biggest roots I've ever had. Look how big that thing got. All right there. And it's still like it's still drawing water up. Look here. Look here. That's like still, the size of a penny. Still drawing water up. Still got all the moisture there still. So uh, it's doing good. They're, I mean, that right there is what you really want to see. You want to see those big, big roots there, you know, and uh, and stuff. So we're gonna get out of here. I'll come back here in a second, show you what everything looks like once I get it dug up. But I'm gonna do a TikTok video on that one right there. So here we go. I do apologize for the lawnmower going. I gotta finish this video up. So in case you didn't see the short, here is the roots. Look how big that root is. I mean, it's just. That's massive. Here's the rest of these huge, huge roots. Look, there was another big long one like that right there. Another big one like that. I mean, they look here. Both of them are massive roots. There's the entire thing right there. Bunches of them broke off, but look how big the majority of those roots were. Just huge, huge, huge roots. That right there was feeding a lot of plant. Well, not a lot of plant, but a big pumpkin. You see here, here's the root, here's the stump right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right there's where we cut it off at. Well, no. Twelve. 13 right here's where we cut it off at here's where it was set so wasn't very long wasn't very far up there on that it was uh these are size 10 shoes so you see the whole main right here look at this look at these uh look at this right here when i gotta pull this up look at that tap root look how big that tap root is massive tap roots guys huge tap roots look, look here look how green it still was even after all the frost and everything we've had good plant 1965 is a good one to grow if you want to grow something get you some of them or you can get uh get one off of me and i've crossed it with a 2195 tile which is down there so i've got it crossed so that next year should be a powerhouse of a plant anyhow guys we can get off of here. I'm gonna go clean them seeds up and uh, get them dried so you guys, so I can test them, and make sure they're germ tested, so you guys can purchase the 21.95 or the 5.43s now, 5.43 cook. And then we'll. Uh, I've got this pumpkin right here, the 1965. It's down at my church, and when they are done with it or it rots, whichever comes first, um, I'll go down there and I'll get that pumpkin and get the seeds out of it and get them dried and ready to be sold that'll be the 958 cook so you guys be looking forward to those seeds for sale guys we appreciate you watching and we'll see you tomorrow right here in the hollers and hills of west virginia don't forget to smash that like button that notification bell don't get the good job here you go thank you don't forget to share. Yep. There you go. Good job. And, and subscribe. subscribe.